Uh, my name is uh, Zev. Uh, that's the polite pronunciation for those of you who are wondering. Uh, and it's great to be here, my first uh, Jane Beyond conference. Um, especially that it's in Barcelona, so I, I, I guess I picked the right year to, to get started. Uh, a quick introduction of who I am. Uh, I have uh, three daughters. Uh, that gives me an awesome excuse to do things like that. I don't know how, how many PHP elephant fans are in the room. I don't know how much it is in sense to the Joomla community. Not so much, but anyway, for the ones of you who are, you can see that having three daughters is a great advantage because you can do things like that and this. <laughs> and, and, and I had excuses to do these, and then th th my daughters actually created this one themselves. So they actually do that too. I'm a photography enthusiast. Uh, I log on my DSLR pretty much everywhere. I'm vegetarian since I was four. Uh, and I'm crazy about spicy foods, which kind of make me an Indian, the combination. Uh, and so I really love uh, Indian cuisine. Um, and among other things, I am one of the uh, architects of PHP and one of the founders of Zend. So I want to uh, start with a really quick uh, um, summary of how I got involved with PHP. Um, Andy Gutmanns and myself, we were students uh, in university, we were studying computer science. At some point, uh, we had to do some real practical work as a part of the studies. And we, we looked at all of the possible options, and one of them was creating a web-based shopping cart. This was back in 1998. Creating a shopping cart, uh, even a very basic one, was considered cutting edge, uh, academic, uh, a cutting edge academic project. And I was familiar with a language called PHP FI from work. Uh, I didn't actually use it back, back at the time. We were two people at this uh, uh, workplace uh, I was at. One was using PHP FI, and I was developing uh, web applications in C++. Don't do that. It's, it's just <laughs> horrible. But I was very proud of that at the time. I thought, you know, this, you know, this other person was using this uh, not very sophisticated scripting tool. He was using Perl. He was using PHP FI. I was using the real deal, a real language like C++. Um, but when I saw the, uh, the, this project of getting a web shopping cart, uh, I thought to myself, hey, this could be really, really easy. I, we don't need to use a real language to do it. We could use a basic language like PHP um, in order to, to create it. And I told Andy, look, we can do this in no time. It's like, it's so simple to do it with PHP FI. We can just get started and, and be done with it uh, in a few days. And uh, then I don't know how many of you had the luxury of uh, doing an academic project like it, but before you get to write any code or even think about writing any code, you first need to uh, discuss the tools that you're going to use and defend the choices and all, th all sorts of things like that. And uh, we did, and we were the only students out of like uh, 10 different, or six, I don't know, different uh, couples of students that did this project. Everyone picked Perl. We were the only students that wanted to use PHPFI, and our instructor, she, she never heard of PHPFI. Um, and she was kind of reluctant to allow us to use it. At the end, after a lot of uh, persuasion, she let us use it. And, uh, you know, again, you continue with writing design documents and all sorts of documents without, uh, w w before you write any piece of code. And then after a couple of months, we actually go to uh, try and actually start implementing uh, a piece of code. And it was, uh, it was fun while it lasted, but about, at about 40 minutes, 35, 40 minutes into the implementation, we started bumping into a really obscure problem. Uh, basically, we were getting a syntax error or a parse error, um, and we were not quite sure where it was coming from. And we looked at the code again and again. Of course, it was the first 40 minutes that we've used PHPFI, so we're kind of pretty confident that we were doing something wrong. But after some very long minutes, uh, we realized that we were not doing anything wrong. Actually, the syntax was fine, our code was fine, and the language was kind of failing to understand itself. Um, it was not uh, passing it itself correctly. 
So we looked at the code. One of the huge benefits of open source, which today is ubiquitous and everyone uses it, back in the day, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was there, but it was, it was not nearly as, um, as popular as it is today. Key benefit, we can take a look at under the hood and see what's, what was going on. And we did, and we were taking a look and tried to look at the pass and the scanner. Um, and at some point we realized uh, what the problem was, and it, was, it kind of reminded, I tried to capture it in, in this image here, it's uh, the, under the hood of a car. Can anyone here spot the problem in this, uh, in this car? Any mechanics in the, in the room? Yeah. What? So anyway, uh, you would not want a pair of mice to be rotating your, uh, your engine. Basically, that's more or less what we found. We found that, uh, that the, the language was implemented in a very um, interesting way, in a, in, a very <laughs> uh, in a very unusual way, I should say. Uh, and, um, and I remember it was kind of uh, uh, shock and awe. On one hand, shock that it was this uh, unusually implemented. At the, other, uh, at the other hand, kind of awe that it actually worked pretty well, considering how really uh, unusually it was implemented. So what we did at, the, uh, 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 at that point is we actually, another benefit of open source is that you typically know who's the person that wrote the code. So we contacted the guy, Rasmus Slerdov, whom I'm sure that many of you have heard of. Um, and uh, to make a long so story slightly shorter, uh, he got back to us and uh, said, look guys, I'm not a computer science major. I did it for my own purposes, and I shared it because I thought some people would find it useful. Uh, but you know, that's a, it's a hobby. It's not my job. So um, the combination of that <clears throat> and the fact that we happen to be uh, just one semester after taking a compilation, te a compilations techniques course, made us feel really capable and dangerous, and we decided to see, you know, can we re-implement this language and do it in a better way? So uh, we went on and did that, and since for the lack of time, I'm going to fast forward three years into the future, um, we ended up creating what was the basis of PHP 3. Uh, we decided to, or, or uh, fortune had it that we both Andy and I and us we thought it would make a lot of sense to cooperate and actually make our implementation be the official successor of PHP FI2. Uh, and that's essentially when PHP became from a one-man project of Osmos into uh, a multi-person project. Uh, it was still pretty small at the time. What you're seeing here is <clears throat> probably the first and last time uh, that it was possible to get almost the entire P3 development team in one picture, in one physical location. This is outside one of the churches in Jerusalem, where we had uh, all of the um, uh, developers who worked on PHP see, them, see uh, each other face to face for the first time. Beforehand, we were working for about three years uh, over the internet, which again, back then, if you're thinking 97, 98, 99, was not very common. And um, what happened afterwards, since essentially PHP uh, 3 and even more so with PHP 4, is that PHP grew in popularity. It exploded in popularity to the level that we kind of, uh, at many junctions over the, the way, we even found it difficult to believe the numbers that we were seeing. And we were seeing all sorts of numbers. We were seeing numbers from Netcraft. We were seeing numbers from Amazon in terms of the different books that uh, were written for PHP and how much they sold and so on. But uh, perhaps the most scientific um, indicator for the popularity of PHP uh, I found in, in this place, which I would be shocked if anyone here in the audience know, know this building. Anyone? Okay. Uh, so this is a two-star hotel in, uh, Buenos Aires, uh, in Buenos Aires, in San Telmo. Uh, and this is a place where my wife and I, back in 2008, went to uh, in order to, uh, I mean, basically, um, as a part of our honeymoon. So we fly all the way from the other side of the planet. We get to Buenos Aires, pretty tired. 
Um, and we start checking in, and it was a bit less computerized uh, of a world back then compared to today. So even though they had a computer, you still had to kind of fill out the form in the beginning, you know, with a passport number and your name and address and all that. So I fill it in, I pass it on to the clerk, and he starts typing in the, the information, and soon enough he gets to my name, and he's uh, asking me, um, Ziv Suaski? Ziv is what typically people t call me. It's kind of the natural pronunciation of the name. Um, I, was, I saw him telling me, yes. And then he asked me, the PHP guy? <laughs> he's like, whoa. I'm in a two-star hotel on the other side of the planet, and this guy at the reception desk know who I am from the, PH from the PHP project. That must mean that PHP is really popular. So I, I, I really consider it perhaps the most scientific indicator for the popularity of PHP, um, among others. And so this guy, by the way, he was, back then he was developing uh, a social network for San Telmo, with the, the neighborhood uh, in Buenos Aires where, where, where he lived. Um, Pauli, this was his night job and uh, the uh, social network was his day job, but I'm not sure what happened to it since then. Anyway, uh, what I want to uh, go over now fairly quickly is a bit about the evolution that led us to PHP 7. So I'm uh, going back in time. PHP 3, released in 98, this is the fruit of the cooperation between Andy Gutmann, myself, and Rasmus, as, as well as, as uh, several others. The two really important elements back then that set it apart from PHP FI was A, that was, it was really a full-fledged language. Expressions, I mean, uh, uh, you asked before how many developers are in the room, and most of you are developers. So the really basic state of PHP, that everything is composed of, with, from statements and, and expressions, this was born in PHP 3. And the other element is that it's really, uh, it became easily extensible. So in PHP FI 2, if you wanted to add support for a new database or whatever, you actually had to change or hack the parser and the scanner. You didn't just focus on uh, the code, uh, the integration with a new database, but you actually had to change the language, which required quite a bit of knowledge and it was uh, difficult. And this was really important because the amount of extensions available to PHP, which today is measured, I think, in the hundreds, with including PECO, uh, and, and you know, God knows how many uh, extensions exist also uh, in, inside companies, proprietary extensions that are not public. Um, that number exploded after PHP 3 and the ability to easily extend it. A couple of years later, two and a half years later, we had PHP 4, um, which um, was released shortly after the face-to-face -face meeting uh, that we had uh, in, in Israel. And the new features there were A, the Zen engine, which is modular, it's built of a uh, a compiler and an executor and the um, uh, interface to modules. At that point, I should mention, just so that you don't think I'm some uh, uh, proud pick that, you know, that I'm dissing Asmus for the uh, poorly written code, I think that PHP 3 was pretty much almost equally horrible. Um, in, if, if I look at it today, or even if I look at it back in 2000, very shortly after it went out, Andy and I realized that we actually, we thought that we were really uh, compilation techniques heroes or experts, but uh, in reality we were pre pretty bad. Uh, it was also uh, shockingly um, poorly written or poorly designed. Just to give you an illustration and move forward, if you had a loop in PHP 3 that was running a thousand iterations, essentially PHP would pass down to the, almost down to the text, the code again and again a thousand, a thousand times. So those of you who know anything about compilation techniques know that this is not a good idea. And in PHP 4, we switch to something which is closer to what other languages do in terms of compilation. You actually take the code, uh, the source code, and you transform it into a different kind of a presentation, like bytecode in Java, uh, and then you execute it. Other things which are really important, sessions, which uh, are ubiquitous in PHP today, Dolan's compatibility, the language was pretty much 
uh, unchanged, unlike the big jump from uh, 2 to 3. Uh, 3 to 4 was a much smaller jump in terms of syntax. Uh, and that actually, still, uh, that actually is still true all the way till today. Most, PHP, most code written for PHP 3 still runs on PHP 7 with either no or very minor modifications, except, I mean, not taking into account deprecated stuff, but for the most part, it just works. And last thing, language plugins that enable things like debuggers, profilers, and uh, um, performance management monitors, and things like that, that was also introduced in PHP 4. Jumping to 5, um, 5, contrary to popular belief, it, it, belief, it didn't introduce uh, object-oriented programming, but it made it a lot more uh, sophisticated and advanced and enabled most of the uh, object-oriented uh, programming models that uh, are um, uh, popular today. It was released about four years after PHP 4. And in terms of uh, engine changes under the hood, not that many. I mean, we were kind of proud that it was not slower than PHP 4. Um, even though we did plant some seeds uh, to uh, improve it in the future. So uh, PHP 5, not radical changes, but it was um, uh, kind of a preparation for future changes that we did end up making. So now I want to show you um, the performance evolution between uh, PHP 4 and 5. And you can see that, as I said, PHP 4.4 and 5 are kind of more or less uh, at the same performance. Actually, in some cases, 5 was slower, uh, especially in object-oriented uh, code, which was uh, majorly factored. Um, but you can see that uh, then we moved into an optimization uh, period, which lasted many years, and 5.1 was already significantly faster than, than 5, and then we gradually improved performance. And then you can see uh, towards kind of nowadays almost uh, that we pretty much reached a plateau. Uh, we, with 5.4, the difference between 5.4 to 5.6 pretty much negligible, especially when you take into account that this benchmark is a synthetic one. And um, if you actually um, benchmarked a reword app, you would see a lot less of a difference because all sorts of other things play in, uh, into account, like uh, you know, waiting for the database. So chances are that if you benchmark Joomla um, between 5.4 and 5.6, you would see oh, no difference uh, at all or very minor one. Just to put things in perspective and kind of back up my statement that PHP 3 kind of sucked, this was PHP 3 in terms of performance. Uh, so this is, by the way, uh, higher is worse, or lower is better. Uh, this is 75 seconds to run the very same benchmark that PHP 5.6 runs in two. So yeah, it was bad. Um, any PHP 6 users here? <laughs> So PHP 6 actually did exist, and this is why uh, we jumped from 5 to 7. It's not that we have some uh, fetish to uh, prime numbers or anything. Um, it did exist. It was uh, a live project for several years. And the premise of PHP 6 was to essentially take PHP 5, not do anything except make Unicode a first-class citizen in the language. Uh, so all stings. All of the functions, uh, all of the different uh, capabilities of the language that use Stings would be Unicode native. Uh, and, uh, you know, in a global world, it's, uh, it's kind of important. It's not that PHP in prior to 6 did not support internationalization, uh, but you had to use special uh, functions. You had to use multi-byte functions or other types of specialized functions to um, work with and manipulate um, non-Western uh, character sets. And um, that, that's kind of the, the, the premise in, in code. I don't know if the folks at the back can see it, but essentially uh, here you have uh, str to upper, the regular function that upper cases a sting, and you supply it with uh, the German word uh, foosball with lowercase, and 
I'm sure that there's a, a bunch of uh, German-speaking folks in the audience. Double S in lowercase in uh, German is this, uh, this character here. It's just one character. And when you uppercase it, when you transport it to uppercase, it's supposed to become two uppercase uh, S's. And in PHP 6, it was just, this would just magically work. You wouldn't have to know that this is a German sting. You wouldn't have to use any special API. This would just work. In the same manner, unfortunately, this one I cannot see. This is geek. Any, any geek speakers in the audience? <laughs> what does it say? I hope it doesn't say anything bad, because I have no idea what it says. That's the Aurora. Aurora. OK, so definitely not something bad. So takes the uppercase uh, Aurora. Thank you very much, by the way. I've, I think it's the 10th time that I'm asking. It's the first time I have a geek speaker <laughs> in the audience. So a truly global uh, community. That's great. Um, so taking the, the uppercase uh, OR and turning it down to lowercase, again, without having to know in advance what kind of language it is and uh, without having to use any special API. So the premise was great. It was a great idea. And many languages, admittedly, do that. Um, there was just. Uh, one, and we were really um, hopeful and excited to see that benchmark. But then, uh, a few months later, uh, well, actually, that was not in 2012. By early, or well, late 2013, early 2014, we had the basic thing working, and then we actually tried to run some real world applications on it, not a benchmark, not, you see some of the benchmarks here, are the stuff that all of you are running, like Mendelbot uh, factors and Fibonacci, right? You all run this kind of code on your servers. And in case you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about, I'm, be assured that you're not uh, running that sort of stuff. That this is the stuff that you use to test test the language or test test the CPU, not to actually uh, uh, create a web application. Uh, when we actually tried to run a web application on JIT, basically there was no performance gain, nada. It was anywhere between minus 1% uh, performance gain and at most plus 1% performance gain. Um, and that kind of sucked because we invested almost two years in this. Uh, and uh, we were also really excited when we saw the initial synthetic benchmarks. And we tried to understand why that was. What was the bottleneck or why was it not yielding any uh, gains? And we had all sorts of, sorts of theories. We thought that maybe the bottlenecks is in real world apps is in the database and not at all in, language, in the language and all sorts of other uh, theories. And then we actually started working with Intel you know, the CPU folks, and try to get the input on it. And we had some, they, they were kind of surprised too. They had a lot of experience doing JIT for the JavaScript languages. They worked on the V8 uh, uh, engine. Um, and uh, we did some back and forth. And then we reached the, the, the theory, I wouldn't say the conclusion, but we reached the theory that um, the memory, the amount of memory that PHP was moving around was just too high. It was, uh, the data structures were not very compact, uh, and consequently, PHP was spending a lot of its time moving memory, uh, you know, back and forth, essentially. Uh, and we reached a theory that if we managed to make the data structures more compact, then this bottleneck will be gone, and JIT will start showing some real-world gains. And we, that, that still kind of sucked, because essentially redoing the PHP uh, data structures required refactoring the whole language. You change the slightest, you make the slightest change in, in one of PHP's basic data structures, and essentially you need to refactor uh, all of the extensions, most of the engine, there's a lot of work. So this wasn't something that we could just uh, uh, tie out and see if we were going in the right direction. And then on top of that, we had to implement JIT. So it was um, a lot of work that we needed to do in order to even know whether we are in the right direction. But we decided that uh, this was the right thing to do. So back in early 2014, we started, uh, uh, we took the 
what was almost PHP 5.6 at the time, um, and we benched away, and we decided that we were going to try and make the data structures more compact, bake them, and just after we refactor the data structures, just try to get PHP to compile and work again. No other features, no other goals, just uh, change the data structures and uh, get it back to work again. And then a few months later, we managed to uh, compile core, uh, the core of PHP. Almost no extensions, I think, except for SQLite. It did run bench.php, and it showed some nice uh, performance gains, by the way. Uh, nothing spectacular. It wasn't JIT, just uh, you know, more compact data structures. And we did run WordPress. I hope that I'm allowed to say that word here. Um, and um, what happened at the time, this is the guy, this is Dmitry Stogov, who, he's the lead developer of the Zen engine today. Um, he can do stuff that Andy and I can only dream of. He's a, a lot better than us. What happened when uh, Dmitry saw the WordPress benchmark, not so much because it's WordPress, but because it's a reword app. <laughs> That's my very poor attempt at making him smile. He doesn't smile a lot, <laughs> so I don't have a photograph of him smiling, so I had to make one. Uh, he smiled. We saw a dent, actually a fairly big dent, in the, the performance of uh, a reword app. It actually was running faster. And that was actually surprising. We didn't even expect the data structures themselves, the optimization of them, to yield uh, a performance uh, boost. We actually thought that it would just be step one, allowing us to implement JIT, and then we would see the performance boost. But actually what we saw is that just by compacting the data structures, um, PHP became significantly faster. Back the, at the time, it was about 30% faster than 5.6. 30% is a lot. 30% not in synthetic benchmark. In a reword app, that's, that's a lot. Um, and um, then we, we understood we had some, something working in our hands. It wasn't like the JIT uh, prototype that we spent two years and ended up in nothing. Here we spent uh, about half a year and uh, we already had something. So we moved this from a POC back to um, the public community uh, PHP project. And uh, then uh, in August 2014, after a vote, uh, which was almost unanimous, there were two people against it, uh, but uh, 47 in favor, uh, we um, uh, made PHP and G, PHP Next Generation, this prototype, the official successor of PHP. And uh, we also had a heated debate about whether we call it PHP 6 or 7. Uh, and uh, among other things, I'm, one of, <laughs> I'm one, perhaps the person responsible for the fact it's called 7 because I insisted that uh, uh, we shouldn't use 6. And there was a vote on that as well. And uh, not by such a good margin, but uh, PHP 7 also won. That, uh, that vote. Um, since we pu published it, performance more than doubled. So actually the 30% we saw in the beginning became more than 100% uh, gains uh, over the course of an extra year. So we kept on optimizing the data structures and doing all sorts of new optimizations that uh, the new refactored code base allowed us to. And under the hood, um, I'm going to skip over this fairly quickly, but uh, those are the data structures that, that changes. So maybe the biggest one is Zval, the uh, Zen engine value, the, the piece of uh, data that represents, or the, the structure that represents pretty much any piece of data in PHP, uh, went down from 24 bytes to 16. So Maybe it doesn't sound a like a lot in absolute terms, but in relative terms, that's a 33% uh, reduction. Uh, and it's used anywhere between thousands to potentially hundreds of thousands of times in every uh, PHP-based page. So that was huge. And then some other data structures, like the hash table bucket from 72 bytes all the way down to 32. This is the piece of, um, this is the structure that uh, is used inside arrays to represent any uh, element inside an array. So that's also quite common, and a hash table itself, which is used to, among other things, represent an array itself. And the memory manager, we also worked a lot to optimize it. Suffice to say that from 20% uh, 
uh, overhead in PHP 5, it's now down to about 5% over, overhead in PHP 7. So that's, those are the key areas where we got the performance gains from and a lot of other optimizations. So uh, wondering whether you should move to PHP 7 or not, how many of you actually moved to PHP 7 already? Wow. Well done. By far the most advanced compared to any other conference I've been to, including many WordPresses. Uh, so usually you see just, it's not even a handful of hands. Uh, so that's great. Um, but in case you haven't and you're wondering, so the first thing, obviously, it's fast. It's a lot faster than PHP 5.6. This is, um, these two graphs, uh, from a case study that a company named Badu, it's not the uh, Chinese Baidu, it's a Russian uh, company named Badu, published, they actually published a very in-depth case study uh, about the experience moving for, from PHP 5.6 to 7. Uh, what you can see here, uh, the, the, the one on the left is perhaps the most remarkable one. This is the um, memory consumption of, uh, of a process, of a PHP process per page. So it went down from about 37 megs to, it didn't completely flatline, it starts at five here, so it, to about five megabytes. From 37 megabytes per request to five megabytes per request. This is not uh, always the case. Uh, this is really extreme, this is on the extreme end. There are some data structures or some, um, um, uh, uh, code patterns where PHP 7 would yield those amazing uh, reductions. In some other cases, it would be more modest, but you would always see a substantial reduction in memory consumption. And here you can also see the CPU load, which was also uh, halved. Um, and they actually, this is a company that used to have um, a, a, a cluster of 600 application servers, and they went down to 300. <laughs> Those guys actually flipped down, shut down half of the servers, which is just remarkable, and they estimated, this is all the stuff, I'm just quoting, $1 million of savings upfront, and then they estimate another $100,000 of savings every year, just from moving, just from upgrading uh, to PHP 7. So that's uh, one motivation. Driving it a bit closer to home, this is, stuff, th this is a benchmark that I plagiarized um, uh, from the web, but essentially Joomla 3.5, that is PHP 7 compatible, you can see that times were more than halved. Um, so from 150 milliseconds down to 60. Um, and memory consumption, not as dramatic as from 40 to 5, but still um, from 12 to 8. It's pretty remarkable. Memory consumption is really important because often memory is the limiting factor on the number of concurrent processes you can run on a given server. So, you know, the more, the less memory your processes consume, the more processes you can run on the same hardware and serve more clients at the same time. And this is not unusual. Um, the common gain from PHP 7, usually, again, usually with very few or none at all, uh, with no, um, without having to change the code, the gains you can get are typically 2x. So you can see pretty much across the board it's in the 2x uh, area, sometimes a bit more than 2x, sometimes a bit less, but it's never negligible. Uh, it's always very tangible and uh, very um, substantial gain. And the same graph that we've seen before, I've t taken out PHP 3 again because we wouldn't be able to tell anything. The synthetic benchmark uh, compared to 5.6, we went down from 1.92 to 0 0.8. Uh, so very substantial gain. We finally made it, managed to uh, create a, a, a big dent in the performance uh, of PHP um, uh, since, probably since 5.3. Um, some other things, and we're kind of running out of time, so I'm going, going to go over them very, very quickly. Uh, PHP 7 is not just about performance, even though for the m perhaps the most important element in it is the performance gains. There are some other really nice things about it, and also, in my opinion, some less nice things about it. Uh, one of the nice ones is that you can much more easily cover from uh, engine level errors. 
beforehand it was possible to have a, an error handler but uh, and to, to catch all sorts of language level errors, but uh, it wasn't very easy to create nice looking code based on this. It was difficult to chain. Uh, if you had uh, different pieces of code coming from different people, then the error handlers needed to play nicely with each other. In PHP 7, those errors are just exceptions that you can catch uh, and, and handle them very nicely in a very clear pieces of code. And if you don't, you can still use the error handler approach. It's, uh, it, it's, um, it's still, it still works. Um, return type declarations. Uh, essentially, you can now define that a function returns a certain type of an element, and if it doesn't, then uh, PHP will uh, error out. And then there's the stuff that personally I find less good, but uh, it was a community decision, uh, scalar type hints essentially being able to tell uh, PHP not just um, that a certain variable or certain argument is, is, is this and that class, but also that it's a, an, in, an integer or a string. Um, it's now possible in PHP 7. There are actually two flavors of it in PHP 7, a strict one and a, a, and a coercive one, uh, I, which, which personally I think is even worse than just having one. But anyway, my recommendation, don't use it. But it's a free word. It's up to you. Um, zero cost assert. This is actually quite nice. Assert existed, I think, since the maybe PHP 3 or 4 days. But um, it had a performance penalty. It was The syntax wasn't very nice. And there was a performance penalty associated uh, with it. Even if you were turning it off, uh, even if you were not actually enabling assertions, because of the way it was implemented, in runtime it would still slow things down. In PHP 7, it essentially doesn't slow things down at all, and the syntax is nicer. So you can put essentially asserts everywhere, as many as you want, uh, to help you debug during development and staging. And then in production, you can simply turn, turn it off, and then there's zero performance uh, impact of, for all of those asserts. They're completely ignored all the way down to the compiler level. Some other notable features, uh, the space operator, which is just a good excuse to bring Star Wars into presentations. It's almost, it's almost useless otherwise. It's, it's useful just for uh, when you're creating callbacks for, uh, for sorting uh, algorithms and pretty much that's it. it it's, uh, it's a three-way comparison between X and Y. So it can tell you essentially if, uh, um, if X is smaller than Y, bigger than Y, or equal in, in one operation. Um, uniform variable syntax and uh, abstract syntax T, for the most part, doesn't really affect um, end users. End users being, in this case, you, developers who are using PHP. Um, uh, it's mostly under the hood, uh, and it enables the creation of tooling, uh, especially abstract syntax, it enables the creation of all sorts of um, source analyzing tools that are now much easier to develop for PHP 7 than they were for 5. The one thing that can bite you, hopefully not, but if you're using this kind of um, uh, code structure, Notice the dollar here. So it's not actually that common. Uh, so dollar foo, error, dollar bar, and then deferencing it is an array. So in PHP 5, it would mean this. It would first take dollar bar uh, and uh, offset buzz and use this as a, an indirection for foo. And in PHP 7, in, it means that. Um, you shouldn't be using this uh, without parentheses anyway. So uh, hopefully, you shouldn't be beaten by that. Uh, upgrading, not very, very common. Filtered and serialized, that adds uh, a bit of extra security to unserialized, and the null coalesce uh, operator, which actually is useful. Uh, this, this on the right is a very common uh, code structure uh, where if x exists and it is not uh, uh, null, you want to use it, otherwise, some default value. So in PHP 7, you have uh, a shorter way to do it, which is not just um, shorter in terms of uh, uh, the amount of bytes uh, or the amount of characters it takes to 
to, uh, to write, it's also slightly more efficient, uh, especially if you have an expression here. So obviously, if you have an expression uh, here, then uh, in, then in PHP 5, it's evaluated twice. Uh, first to see if it's uh, true or not, and then to get the value. And if you use this approach, then um, it will be evaluated just once. The fullest, <coughs> the fullest of uh, PHP 7 features is available here. It's quite comprehensive. The, the documentation team folks did an excellent job documenting all of the changes. So you can go to bit.ly slash PHP 7 news. You'll get the everything that I spoke about today, uh, in terms of new features at least, uh, and, and then some. Going forward, um, so PHP is a very lively uh, uh, community, and it's very, very active, um, and there are a lot of new features being discussed, and um, many um, new proposals for syntax. Personally, I'm a lot more conservative. I would love for many of them to not go into the language, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, today, there are several hundred people who have a vote um, in terms of influencing whether a feature goes into PHP or not, and they have the exact same vote as us, most me, and any other. So uh, it's not that we have uh, uh, control over where it's going. Uh, but in terms of the performance, what I can say is that we're continuing research, and I'm sure that PHP 7.1 would be significantly faster than even 7. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. If you have questions, I think. Thank you. I think we even have a couple of minutes for questions.